Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to revisit the double ultimatum game by instituting a rule that diminishes the number of cookies if a counteroffer is made. This is the first step towards eventually teaching you Rubenstein bargaining, which is an extremely important concept in game theory. To refresh your memory, in the original ultimatum game, Angelica and Tommy were trying to split a dozen cookies. Angelica made a take-it-or-leave-it offer to Tommy. If Tommy accepted, then he got that number of cookies and Angelica got the rest. But if he rejected, both got nothing. That gave us this extensive form, and we concluded that Angelica offers Tommy one cookie in equilibrium and gets to keep the other 11 for herself. Then we look to see what happens if Tommy could propose a counteroffer, which Angelica could either accept or reject, following the same rules that Tommy had before. And that gave us this somewhat daunting extensive form. Just to be clear, Angelica begins the game by offering Tommy X cookies. Tommy can accept that offer, reject that offer, and end the game, or propose a counteroffer. If Tommy proposes a counteroffer, Angelica can either accept it or reject it. When we solve this, we found that Tommy gets 11 cookies and Angelica only gets 1. Now we're going to institute a new rule. If Tommy makes a counteroffer, his mother Dee Dee will punish the kids by taking away 2 cookies from both of them. And then Tommy can only offer a split of the 10 remaining cookies, that's 2 less than the original dozen that they had. And now we have this extensive form. Like the other ultimatum games, it's looking like a candidate for backward induction, so let's do that. If Angelica reaches her final information set, then she will accept any offer greater than zero, as that will give her more cookies than getting nothing. Now suppose that Tommy will make an offer. It's very easy to see that Tommy will offer Angelica one cookie and save the other nine for himself. If he offers her more than that, then he'll only be taking away from his own collection of cookies, and if he offers her zero, then she will reject that offer and he will wind up with zero as well. So the subgame perfect equilibrium offer for y here is 1, and Angelica will accept that. Now we have to check to see if Tommy might prefer one of his other two choices, accepting or rejecting. Let's look at reject. Well, rejecting gives him here nothing, and that's far worse than 9, so we can just get rid of that one. And now all we have to do is check to see whether he will want to accept Angelica's initial offer, and that of course will depend upon what Angelica offers him. It's obvious that anything less than 9 will be insufficient to get Tommy to accept that. Meanwhile, 11 and 12 are too much, as Tommy will be willing to accept an offer of just 10, and by offering her 11 or 12, excuse me, by offering him 11 or 12, Angelica will only be reducing the number of cookies that she gets in the end. Now, you might be tempted to guess that Angelica can safely demand 3 cookies and leave 9 for Tommy. However, Tommy can credibly threaten to ignore that offer, as he knows he can get 9 later on. And he has incentive to do this, too. If he can get Angelica to offer him 10 cookies instead, then he'll get more out of the deal. Moreover, Tommy's threat to propose a counteroffer is scary to Angelica, as that means she'll ultimately only get one cookie. But by offering ten, Tommy has incentive to accept, and Angelica will get two cookies out of the deal instead of one. And that is our subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. This is far more fair than our original game, as the split is more even than it was before. Next time we'll expand this game, allowing both kids to keep making counteroffers until one accepts or all the cookies are gone. And before you actually look at that video, I invite you to try to check on that problem on your own and see if you can solve that game and see if it reflects what we'll actually learn next time.